Just kidding. It's kind of scary though, right? It's kind of cool. No? Eh, whatever. All right, well, let's get started. Ooh. My eyes have got to adjust to these lights. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cybersecurity 101. I'm Mark Hemingway, content producer here at Archer Energy Solutions. Today, we're gonna talk about Trojan Horse. Now, I'm familiar with this in history, but when it comes to cybersecurity, I don't really know. I'm assuming it's hiding something in something. I mean, if that's, if, if I had to take a stab at it, I'd say hiding something in something. And knowing the world we live in, it's probably something bad other than something good. Um, because, you know, back in the day, if you think about it, for the people that were inside the horse, it was something good. But for the people for the people outside of the Trojan horse, it was bad. So I imagine we are the people on the other side of the horse for this one. So anyway, let's jump right to it. If you're not familiar with the show, I use ChatGPT to help me learn about cybersecurity. So today's topic, Trojan horse, and we're going to start right away with, in cybersecurity, what is a Trojan horse? A Trojan horse is malicious software disguised as legitimate software. Okay, so... Yeah, because the Trojan horse was like, ooh, here's this really cool horse. And then go to sleep, and then they come out and get you. Um, so, allowing unauthorized access or causing harm to a computer system. So... Um, Okay, all right, so it's kind of basically what I thought it was. All right, well then that leads me to my next question is if it's malicious software and it's bad, how do we tell if it's bad? So how do we know that we're downloading malicious software? So how can you tell if the software is a Trojan horse? You can detect a Trojan horse by using antivirus software, monitoring unusual behavior, or conducting malware scans. Okay, so pretty much all the usual stuff. Um, all right, so I was just curious, are, are Trojan horses, are they pretty common? Yes, Trojan horses are common types of malware found in various cyber attacks, or various, depending on where you're from. So we know it's a form of malware, so how does it differ from other types of malware? So how does a Trojan horse differ from other types of malware? disguises itself as legitimate software to gain access to a system, while other malware types may have different methods or purposes, such as viruses that self-replicate or worms that spread independently. Yeah, we've learned about those guys. Oh, man. I wonder if that whole thing about having a Mac and a PC still stands. Like, are Macs safer than PCs? Do they have more protection on them? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know because I'm, I'm curious. I, I use a Mac, but it's pretty obvious that I'd use a Mac. So I'm just wondering if Macs are safer anymore these days. That was like the big thing. So This might be similar to what we've already kind of talked about, but um, just was curious is how can individuals or organizations protect themselves against a Trojan horse? Uh, using antivirus software, being cautious of suspicious emails or downloads, keeping software updated, and implementing firewalls and intrusion detection systems. Okay, so the usual stuff. Just keep yourself up to date. Don't click on anything. I don't click on anything. Nothing. Even if you told me you sent it to me, I still am going to hesitate before clicking on it. But, I mean, eventually, like, I'll know, okay, this is, this is from you, but it takes me a minute. Let's take a look at our next question here, which is, what are some signs that your device might be infected with a Trojan horse? Let's see, slow performance, uh, unexpected pop-ups or advertisements, unexplained changes in settings or files, and unusual network activity. Okay, it's pretty common. Sounds like it's pr pretty common as to uh, the different other types of malwares and stuff that we've, we've seen before too, so. But it disguises itself as something that's good. Which I feel like all malware does that. Because it's like, ooh, click here, get the candy. 
you know, and then you click there, and there's no candy. I guess my next question would be, what measures can developers take to prevent their software from being used as a Trojan horse? Like, hey, click on this Microsoft thing here, or, you know, hey, this Amazon thing. Like, how can they prevent themselves from being the Trojan horse? All right, so securing your coding practices, conducting thorough code reviews, regularly updating and patching their software. So all the things that we need to, we need to do, they need to do, and plus a little bit more. Additionally, developers should educate users about potential security risks and encourage them to download software uh, only from reputable sources. Okay, and then again, you never know who you can trust. Are they really the ones saying, hey, this is the one to use, so use this one. It's hard to say. All right, so Trojan Horse, bad, um, disguises itself to look like something good, which I think is pretty much the form of all malware, which the Trojan Horse is. So now let's wrap up with my final question of the day, which is what is an example of a real life Trojan Horse incident? So let's see, uh, the, the Zeus Trojan, which targeted banking systems, it infected users' computers, allowing attackers to steal sensitive financial information such as login credentials and banking details. Oh man. I got nothing to say to that other than, you know, just go to the bank. Get out of the house, get in your car, go for a little drive, get out, meet the nice friendly people at your bank. They're there for a reason, so do it in person. Well, thank you for once again joining me for another Cybersecurity 101. Um, please don't forget to follow us on our social medias, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, um, as well as on our YouTube channel, at ArcherU. Don't forget to go there, uh, watch our videos, like, and subscribe, and ring that bell so that every time we post a new cybersecurity or any of our other videos, uh, you'll be notified that a new one is available to watch. So. All right, well, thank you, and uh, have a great uh, rest of the week and weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye. You can catch new episodes every Thursday. Follow us on YouTube at ArcherU. Like, subscribe, and click the bell notification to be notified when a new episode has been released. Is there a question or a topic you'd like Mark to address on an upcoming episode of Cybersecurity 101? Leave them in the comments below and check back in every Thursday for a brand new episode.